we have a little bit of break in the rain, so <laughs> the sun's out. It's really cold. It's very, very, very I cold. I think it's in the upper 20s, low 30s this week. We have a little bit of time before the snow is going to hit. All the previous snow melted off from the other day. Uh, and we have a couple trees that we want to take care of along the driveway and the outside perimeter of the property. The soil was really loosened up by uh, the flood that we had here for a long time. And then we had a little bit of a windstorm. So it has definitely caused a lot of the beetle kill to start wanting to come down. We're going to do what we can to eliminate the threat to the driveway and the road. Yeah, let's get it done before the snow snow is here. Yeah. And, uh, and it's frozen to the ground. Yeah, yeah, yeah we yeah. definitely <laughs> are on a timeline here because yes. otherwise everything's going to freeze in yeah, place. Yeah, a couple days. We have a couple days. We're also going to try out the new the new chainsaw. So we got a probably the last one in the area. Safety yeah. first. God. We got to use the new chainsaw. <laughs> Do you put the other yeah, blade put, on there? Yeah, I put the regular blade. Mm, thank you. Yeah. That that thing well, that thing's heavy. Yeah, yeah, that thing's heavy. I'll be using the the smaller yeah. chainsaw cuz when I Yeah, that yeah. one's heavy. <laughs> This is uh, so sad, the beetle kill destruction that has happened because a lot of these trees were perfectly fine this time last year. Yeah. And um, it's, it's not only our area, but you can see it all over in, in the valley. It's just came through and killed a majority of the trees. probably why you don't cut them that way uh yeah this is a widowmaker tree the two have grown together and uh, are leaning very far apart uh yeah yeah i should have figured out a way to make the cut on the inside first yeah that's what i was thinking um lessons learned right so don't do what we're doing <laughs> Watching you though, and watching the tree. There we go. Jimba! Woo! Okay. Thank you. 
So I don't know, maybe, maybe that one's not good, I don't know. Oh, this one's light. Yeah. Really light. Yeah, there's no, no cracks in it. Yeah, anything, that one so looks good. It'd be okay. good to practice on it. Mm -hmm. this one's mm -hmm. Here. Okay. This, I gotta lift it up and over the side. <laughs> I love on the gas cans how they have all these gizmos for for safety sake, but in colder climates, they all freeze, you know, so you can't really get the gas. You know what I'm saying? Yep. I hear you. this we got this splitter it's done really well for us we're gonna cut some more wood today we're just gonna top off the woodshed a little bit and we gotta we gotta take care of some uh, the beetle kill stuff so it doesn't blow over in the wind we have to do some maintenance on this because I noticed that it was dripping a little bit from that so the way this works or at least my understanding of it is 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 this uh, reservoir down here in this pipe and tube is full of uh, hydraulic fluid when we ask it to split a piece of wood, it opens this valve, which allows the pump to pressurize, uh, to drain hydraulic fluid into this part to pump it in there, which then pushes a plunger that moves this forward. And since hydraulic fluid, to my understanding, does not compress, it makes a really good fluid for that. Yeah, that yeah. makes sense. And then when we pull it back, the pump basically uh, I think the pump drains the fluid through here back into the reservoir. Cool. That's my understanding of it. Um, but this is dripping. And so that it doesn't blow off explosively, if it fails, we're going to tighten that. Tighten it up. Oops. There we go. Tightened. Good. Is it a good, give it a good use. I... <laughs> I remember putting this thing together. Yeah. This was a... Uh, it came unassembled. Yeah, all of our heavy equipment did. Yeah. Here we go. Choke. So it was... Hold on a second. It was running for yeah, a while. Yeah, I know. So, so just put just it on run. run. Yeah. It's probably warm. Yeah, I agree.
one feels a little wet. <laughs> well, I hope you're ready. <laughs> of course I'm ready. I can't believe that I'm ready, but I actually am ready. <laughs> we have stacked the, the, the woodshed aspect of this building. We have 13 feet by 6 feet by 8 feet, give or take, a couple inches of wood. Mm -hmm. I think that's about four cords-ish. And I think, I'm not sure how much we went through last year, but it was less less than that during the winter. I'm hoping so. I'm hoping so. If not, I got my reserves. <laughs> yeah, we do have a reserve pile of wood. It's not exactly seasoned, and if we have to dig into it, we will. I can't believe we got it done. Um, yeah, the woodshed and the wood, we had, you know, quite the happenstance with the flood. A lot of our wood that we had already prepared in our logs floated away during the flood and the woodshed too, we had to halt construction on it um, for, and wait for, for month, everything month dried two. up. Yeah. And uh, somehow, some way we got it done. And I, I'm thankful we had kind of a late setting winter. I mean, mm -hmm. we, we were fortunate. We were so fortunate. I'm pleased, I am <laughs> so happy. <laughs> about this uh, a lot of this wood uh richard found you know all the beetle kill that was dry standing dead wood and that helped tremendously because you know all the stuff that we cut down of that previously you know got waterlogged the water was here for over a month uh-huh oh yeah yeah i mean i think it was the beginning of october when it actually the water went away The fact that we got so many emails with offers of support in many forms after the flood we experienced is a testament to the strength of our community. Your messages, emails, and comments continue to help reinforce our resilience and dedication to our project. Thank you very much for continuing to watch, like, and share our videos with your friends and family.